It's truly the age old question, where the heck do eels come from? While we may not know the exact answer to that, what we do know is that eels were very important to many cultures around the world. For thousands of years, humans have eaten eels. Archaeologists have found eel bones in medieval Germany. In England, you could even pay your rent in eels. Japan had grilled eel recipes by the 12th century. And if you look closely at Da Vinci's Last Supper, Jesus and his disciples even have eels on the table. When the Mayflower landed in North America, one of the first First things that Squanto taught the pilgrims was how to catch eels. And yes, there are definitely eels on that first Thanksgiving menu. But here's the thing, nobody knew where eels came from, and yet they were everywhere. There were eels in rivers, lakes, seas, even isolated ponds that dried out and refilled each year with no connection to other water sources. And stranger still, they had no visible sex organs. No one had seen eels mate. So naturally, the theories got wild. Aristotle decided that eels spontaneously arose out of mud and rainwater. Ancient Egyptians believed they formed when the sun shone on the Nile. In 18th century Italy, amid ongoing wars, scientists decided to unite the nation by being the first country to discover eel gonads, a certainly unique approach to nationalism, and they hastily announced their success, but they were wrong. Before Sigmund Freud became famous for psychology, he was obsessed with finding eel testes. Eventually, he failed and moved on to human beings, where testes were considerably less mysterious. Eels are interesting because they have four distinct life phases and often get mistaken for different types of fish during each stage, when in fact, it was the same eel the entire time. They start out as larvae floating in the open ocean, then become glass-like elvers swimming towards the coastline, then into yellow-brown eels that can move across land and hibernate in mud for decades, finally becoming silver eels with powerful muscles. In this phase, the eel will travel thousands of miles relying on its fat reserves to survive. This is when the reproductive organs develop for the first time, which is why when Europeans try to find the sexual organs of eels in European ponds and could not, it was because the reproductive organs didn't exist yet. But the big question remained, where do they come from? In the late 1800s, Danish oceanographer Johann Schmidt decided to find out. And in 1921, he finally announced his findings, stating that eels come from the Sargasso Sea right in the middle of the Bermuda Triangle. Despite all our modern technology, no one has seen an adult eel in the Sargasso Sea. So scientists put GPS trackers on 700 silver eels. Every single one disappeared. One expedition collected 7,000 fish from the Sargasso Sea and did not get a single eel. After thousands of years of eating eels, we still don't know where the heck they come from. These eels are elusive as heck. 